So Red, we're waiting on parts and supplies for this one. What we're gonna do now? You need to get that plastic car out of here and drag some metal up in here and make some sparks fly. Hey, I got an idea, hold my sweet tea. Hey guys, we're back on the 34 Coupe. Welcome back to Rat Rob Bob's Little Shop Where Dreams Come True. So we got the coupe up in here. We got, I'm waiting on stuff. I got, I got a hood coming from the West Coast. I got a grill shell coming from England. I got some resin and cloth and other materials, sheets, all kind of stuff coming from the East Coast. Now I got stuff coming from all over the place, but it ain't here yet. And I need most of that before I can do what I need to do. But the trunk lid, I can work on, start working on the trunk lid a little bit. So it, it don't fit. I'm gonna show you guys why it don't fit and what I'm gonna try to do to fix it. So we're gonna be working on that while we're waiting on the other stuff. How's that? So there's several things wrong with the trunk lid. I mean, the main thing is not built for this car. It's built by a different manufacturer, I guess. And uh, so I'm gonna show you what I got. Uh, for one thing, it don't go down at the bottom because it's hitting right there. It don't, it's just not compatible with this car. So after some highly classified scientific rat rod calculations, I'm just going to take the grinder and grind some of that down so that'll fit down on there. But if you, if you look, the trunk lid needs to go this way. You see it's, I mean, it's not even all the way down there. When I get that all the way down, it's going to be even worse. So I got to bow it this way. I got a plan, I don't know if it's gonna work or not, we're gonna find out. That trunk lid only go one way. It's, it's wider across the top than it is across the bottom at the back, like a half inch wider. So I tried to turn around the other way and it don't fit at all the other way. But you see, uh, it's got a tight, I'm about to narrow it down a little bit. It's got a really tight gap. Not a lot, but a little bit. I got, I got to, I got to trim it down a little bit sideways, and make it a little bit more narrower. Not much. And you see right here, you see right there, it won't, won't go down. Uh, this is supposed to be at the top. This side, I'll show you what I'm talking about. I don't know if you can tell or not, but this edge is angled in a little bit. This should be the bottom. And this one's straight. It should be the top. Because what's happened, what happens is that top, when you shut it, that lip kind of goes down in that rain gutter a little bit. And being as the trunk lid is backwards, the bottom is at the top and the bottom is, is angled like that. So when you put the trunk lid on where it fits, this top piece is angled like that instead of straight. So that's a problem. And at the bottom, it should be angled this way, but it's like straight, so yeah. The trunk lid is not for this car. I'm gonna try to make it for this car. Uh, so what my plan is, uh, since the bottom, this is gonna be the top, it's supposed to be the bottom, but it's gonna have to be the top. I'm gonna have to probably modify that. Uh, the bottom's gonna have to be modified. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just cut some slits in this and these ribs, a bunch of slits all the way across. And I'm gonna take a couple of ratchet straps and I'm gonna suck that in a little bit to give that more of a shape like this. And while the ratchet strap is holding it in place, I'm gonna glass that in. I'm gonna re-glass that, those joints and these edges. 
on both sides. I got, like I said, I got to make this, I got to grind some off this anyway, so I'm going to make this a lot thicker so I had some meat to work with. So, uh, you know, being, being, being just so old, I, it's not going to be a chemical bond. I'm going to have to get a mechanical bond. So I need, to, I need to rub this up really good. Everywhere I put fiberglass, I need to rub it up. And uh, like these places here, it's going to be hard to get to the edges. I'm going to put some along that edge inside. It's going to be hard to get to. So one of my fans suggested using the sandblaster to, uh, you know, because it'd be easy to get in there with sandblaster, and plus it'll break, up, break loose some of the little fibers. They might stick up a little bit, give it something to bite to. So I'm going to try that. Uh, I, I said, I'm going to do that first. I'm going I'm to get the sandblaster hooked up and uh, sandblast some of that and see what it looks like. So stay tuned. Another thing I'm going to do, this lip is way too wide. It don't need to be that wide. I'm going to cut some of it off like, like across there. Uh, that's going to work right. See, I already got the corners marked. The reason I've done that is because, so I'm going to cut it with this jigsaw. And if you see, if I run that jigsaw right along that edge right there, it's going to be perfect right there. I'm going to cut as much as I can with a jigsaw. I should be able to get pretty much everything except for the bottom, and then I'll get the uh, body saw and finish the bottom up. Get some of that out of the way. I don't need all that. It don't look good anyway, so there's that. So I made those modifications, I cut that out, trimmed it up a little bit. Uh, I got these cut down and see if it fits. Get it even there and even there. Closing up a rat rod. So I'm gonna measure how much off it is and where where it's off mainly. So that's a quarter inch. Mm, three eighths. Start to get back up. Three eighths. Right there. So I need to make it three eighths the other way, right there. If I check this side, like same three eighths, about right there, about fourteen inches. Yep, thirteen and a half. Make it 14. Yep. Right there. They had three eighths the other way right there. So I transfer this mark all around. Right there. Same on this side. Right there. I need plus three eighths. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take a straight edge, sit right there. 
see what I got now. I got three inches. See what I got on this side. Hopefully it's three inches. Yep, three inches. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put it back on there and get it, and it does fit. See how far that does fit? So I could, I know where I need to cut these. So I got it marked. Look like it needs to come all the way to nothing there and start spitting like right here. So from there to there, same on this side, fits. And up and they go all the way to nothing there, start spitting somewhere about right there. Hey, that's close enough for a rat rod. Yeah, this is gonna be a rat rod, guys. It's too bad shape. I'm not gonna be trying to make it like a perfect slick hot rod. We're gonna rat rod this fiberglass coop. How's that? Hey, it's close enough for a rat rod. Now we gotta bend it. So I got some marks, inch and a half part. And what I'm doing, I'm just taking the straight edge and lay it from one side to the other. And then I know where, I, then I can make a mark where I need to cut these ribs. Try to make it bend even when it does bend, if it bends. So I'm gonna do that all the way. And then I'm gonna have to come back and cut these too. I'm gonna have to cut these edges. Hope for the best. So I got my trunk lid there, got it kind of squoze together where it gets the arch like I want it. I hit it with 60 grit flat wheel on the side grinder. I hit it with a 60 grit on a Dremel to try to get a mechanical bond because I understand that you can't get a chemical bond because this is too old. So I got to get a mechanical bond. So I got it roughed up really good. And as my buddy in Florida that does fiberglass work says, you get grind down good and you wipe it with acetone and then you pray to the fiberglass guys that it's gonna work, so that's what I'm gonna do. Got some acetone on this rag right here. Wipe it down good with that. And then we're gonna mix up some resin, cut some cloth, and see what happens. <laughs> Hey, who cares if it's a rat rod? I mean, you see it's in bad shape. This here's all busted up. Already bad shape anyway, so. I can't hurt it because it don't fit anyway. So there's that. I'm gonna use the same acetone to clean my tools. 
rollers and stuff that I use to put the fiberglass on with, I just dip them down and let them soak in this and clean them up. Double check my measurements. I needed, it was three, I needed three and three eighths. I kind of got it squoze together there. I got three and three eighths on that side. Got three and three eighths on this side. And I got some one and a half mat pieces and I got some two inch pieces going on the side here. So I got that cut. Uh, I understand that fiberglass shrinks when it dries, so it may shrink and suck it, make it too much art, I don't know, but hey, you gotta start somewhere. So I'm starting here and we're gonna see what happens. So wish me luck. Show you what tools I got. I got a pan with a ladder. I got a roller, I took a nine inch and cut it and made three, three inches out of it. So I got that, got the dobbin brush, got the rollers to get the air out, a uh, corner roller, I got the messy cup, I got the resin, I got the hardener, I got the peep it to measure the hardener. So, yeah, I don't even know how much resin I'm gonna need, I'm gonna start with, I just guesstimated, I'm gonna use eight ounces, just start with that, see what happens. So, uh, it's a learning process for me, so I'm gonna start learning right now. All right, we need eight ounces of resin. Eight ounces, about halfway up. Look at it from the inside, be easier. That's eight ounces right there. For eight ounces, I'm gonna put two and a half cc's a hardener. Let's see, two and a half. Two and a half right there. Stir it up good. Said stir it for two minutes and it got like 20 minutes to, to work it. So get on the edge of the cup, bottom of the cup. Make sure we get all that mixed up really good. These gloves ain't cutting it. Done got a hole in the fingertips already. These are for painting, I don't know if they'll work or not. We're gonna find out. One thing about them, they made tougher. There's some stronger gloves for sure. Get it on right. All right, see what we can do now. Edge of the cup, bottom of the cup. Probably ain't near enough resin. Probably ain't even near about enough, but we're gonna start somewhere. The good thing about it is laminating, so I can always mix more, keep going. We're gonna try that. And, uh, all right, here we go.
Now some cloth, where to start? I don't guess it matter. Yep, not near enough resin. Not near about enough. enough resin. Not a good start. Not enough resin. I got it laid up. I got two layers of uh, 1.5 cloth on each side. And I got one layer on the ribs. I think I got most of the air bubbles out. Hey, it ain't perfect. Not too bad for a redneck though. We're gonna find out. So, it says 24 hours of cure, so let it set 24 hours, trim the edges, and see if it fits. I did double check after I got done laying it up. I checked to make sure I still got my three and three eighths on each side, so we good there. It just gonna depend on how much that fiberglass shrinks to how it's gonna fit when it's secured, so yeah. Yeah, so now we wait. By the way, just in case you're wondering, I mixed eight ounces to start. That wasn't near about enough to even do the ribs, so I mixed up another 16 ounces, so that's what, 24 ounces to do that. And uh, I got a little bit left in the pan, a little bit in the cup. Yeah, 24 ounces to do that right there. So I'd appreciate it, some of you fiberglass gurus out there, leave me a comment, let me know how I done, if it's gonna work, not work, could have done better, what I could have done different, and all that good stuff. So, I, hey, I appreciate all the help I can get, because this is uh, my first fiberglass car. I've done some fiberglass a long time ago on boats and stuff, but this is the first, yeah. It's a learning curve for me, for sure. So, yeah, leave me a comment. Let me know what I can do to improve the situation. <laughs> so now we'll let the deck lid cure, trim it up, see if it fits. When I get the hood and the grill shell, it's gonna be a while. I mean, the grill shell's coming all the way from the UK, England, so it's gonna be a while on that. When I get that, I can get the body positioned exactly where I want it. In the meantime, while I'm waiting on that stuff, I'm gonna go ahead and stick the engine in there kind of where it needs to go in the transmission. 429, 
Thunder Jet. <laughs> it's gonna, gonna be a it's gonna be a tight fit, but I'm gonna see if it's gonna work. And I may drag. I got all the front suspension parts. I may drag them out, unbox them, and start connecting some of that up, and get the rear end under the back. Just got to be narrowed, but I can get it in there and kind of see what is going where it's got to go and try to get some. I'm waiting on my pie crust cheater states to come in. It's going to be a pile another week, couple of weeks. I don't know, two or three weeks before they get here. So I'm just going to take some probably the Thunderbird wheels. <laughs> They're about the same height, 29 inches, and use those tires of wheels to kind of just get an idea what the car is going to look like and try to get ever start getting things lined up. I got to get all that lined up and then before I do the doors, I got to mount, get the body mounted to the chassis. Uh, the floor in, mounted. I got to build metal framing for the door latch and the door hinges. I got to do a lot of metal framing in there so I can get started on some of that. So I can start doing some of that metal frame in there as soon as I get figure out where the body needs to go. Hey, it's gonna be a slow process. And uh, this thing's in bad shape. And being as I don't know what I'm doing, it's gonna be a rat rod, guys. We're gonna have a fiberglass rat rod, so uh, there's that. All right, next day. It's cured. Not tacky. I was kind of worried because it got down like below 60 last night, it's supposed to be 70 and above to cure, but hey, it worked out great, no problem. Now, I'm gonna trim those edges and see how it fits. Just in case you're wondering, we can look at the edges after I trimmed it. They're pretty thick now, so I can shave it size down a little bit to get just a little bit of gap on each side. So, and I can always come back and add some more on the inside if I need to. But hey, that's gonna work. So we're getting it, we just ain't got it yet. But hey, it's gonna be great. You hear me? Gonna be great. All right, let's see what we got here. Hey, it's strong too. Man. Man, that fits like socks on a rooster. <laughs> it ain't perfect, but who cares as a rat rod? I mean, it's close enough to perfect for me. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's pretty good right there. That ain't perfect right there. It got a little hump. Uh, this side, this side's a winner. 
<laughs> this side is almost winter. I'm making a. Uh, that's close enough. Hey, close enough for a rat rod. We definitely made some improvements on it. I mean, see, it's not sunk down there now like it was. It's kind of pretty much even all the way around. Right in there, it's got a little bit, a little bit lower right in there. But this has got to come out, so that's probably that's probably gonna be fine. When I get it fitting, it's probably gonna look great. It's probably gonna be great. Not too bad for a redneck, huh? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna call that a win. That's a big win. Hey, first time out doing fiberglass work on a rat rod, hot rod. Hey, it worked out great. Imagine that. <laughs> so, hey, I'm on a roll. <laughs> we're gonna build a fiberglass car. We got the stuff, we're getting the stuff to do it with. We Evidently, we got the know-how. I mean, that worked fine. I mean, yeah, fiberglass is not gonna be that difficult. It's kind of like welding on it with plastic. Put some on, grind it off, put some more on, grind more off until you get it like you want it. I guess that's the way it's gonna be. So, hey, I tell you what, that was a little job, but for me, since it was my first time doing this kind of stuff, it's kind of a big job for me. And uh, that's a lot of work. I'm taking the rest of the weekend off with pay. Appreciate you, see you next time.